Hello and welcome to another lesson from Bales Chemistry. Today we're going to do a little how-to on ionic equations. It doesn't really fit in any of the syllabus areas, but it's one of those things you just really need to be able to do and will get asked to do many times in your exam papers and through your A-level course. So before we can understand ionic equations, we need to be able to do ionic formula. So we'll look at a couple of examples on the next few slides. This first one, we're going to look at metal with an element, so metal and a non-metal element. Uh, we've got magnesium and fluorine, and we'll look at the charges to start off with on the ions. So we'll have magnesium as a two plus ion, and this is because it's in group two. And we'll have fluorine as a one minus ion, and that's because it's in group seven. And we're going to do this little crossover method. I prefer this little crossover method. It makes it really quick to work out the charges and the ionic formulas very quickly. Uh, so we'll take magnesium and fluorine there and we'll just cross the charges over. So we'll take the number for magnesium. So we'll have two fluorines because we've got a two on the magnesium. And we'll need one magnesium because we've got one minus on the fluorine. And that gives us an overall formula of MgF2. Now, I'll just quickly remind us all, but uh, group ones have plus one charges, group twos have plus two charges, group threes have plus three charges, group fives have minus three charges, group sixes have minus two charges, and group sevens have minus one charges, usually. Now, if we have a difference to that, we'll see that indicated by a Roman numeral uh, next to the name. So we'll look at a more complicated example now with a metal and a non-metal ion this time. So we're going to use the example of magnesium and the hydroxide ion. So we'll put the charges out as magnesium 2 plus and the OH minus ion. Now, if you're thinking, where does the OH minus come from or where do we, how do we know that it's an OH minus? Uh, that's all to do with the oxidation states and lessons on redox. Um, but we've got a little table here of common ions and that's the hydroxide is the OH minus. The sulfate is the SO4 2 minus. The nitrate is the NO3 minus and the carbonate is the CO3 2 minus. Back to our example then, we've got Mg2 plus and OH minus. We'll do the same crossing over method as we did before. We'll take the Mg2 plus, so the 2 plus goes over there to make us an OH2 and the 1 minus comes over here to give us Mg1. Now, if you notice, we've got the OH there in brackets, and that's because it's an ion. There's more than one atom in there. So we want the two to apply to all of the atoms inside the brackets. And that gives us their Mg open bracket OH close bracket two. In our final example here, we're going to look at a transition metal with a non-metal. Now, transition metals are a little bit different as they can have different charges or variable oxidation states. So we're going to look at the example of iron 2 reacting with oxygen. Now, in this case, iron 2 will have a 2 plus charge and oxygen has its usual 2 minus charge. We'll do exactly the same method as before and we'll write them out and cross them over to get Fe2 and O2. Now, we don't leave it as Fe2O2, we like to simplify it down to FeO. Now, if you're a bit struggling with your Roman numerals, there's a table here to remind you of some of them. You have a quick look at that. And then we're going to move on to looking at how we work out an ionic equation. So before we start writing out our ionic equation, we need to look at all the ionic compounds present in a normal equation and understand that any of them that are in the aqueous state will split apart. So for example, if we look at sodium hydroxide here, sodium hydroxide splits apart to be an Na plus ion and a OH minus ion. If we then look at hydrochloric acid or HCl, that splits apart to be a H plus ion and a Cl minus ion. Taking that into our next slide where we're going to look at this example of an ionic equation where we take this sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride and water, we're going to break this apart into one big long equation with all the separate ions present. So here we've got the Na plus ion and the OH minus ion coming from sodium hydroxide, the H plus and the Cl minus coming from the HCl, and the Na plus and the Cl minus coming from the NaCl at the end. Now the water is a liquid, so nothing splits apart in the water because it's not an aqueous compound. Now what we need to do next is take the ions on the left hand side and cancel them with any ions that are on the right hand side that match up. So we'll look first at the sodiums and we'll remove those. And then we'll look at the chlorines and we'll remove those. The last thing that's left to do is to write out the final equation, the final ionic equation with the ions left that we haven't cancelled and the final product. Let's take a look at another example. Here we've got sodium hydroxide reacting with aluminium sulfate to form sodium sulfate and aluminium hydroxide. We'll split them apart to their individual ions, and here we find that the sodium ions and the hydroxide ions come from sodium hydroxide, the aluminium and the sulfate ions come from aluminium sulfate, 
and then in the products we've got sodium ions and sulfate ions coming from the sodium sulfate but no ions coming from the aluminium hydroxide because that's there as a solid we'll look at the ions and we'll cancel the ones that appear on both sides so we'll take the sodiums out and then we'll take the sulfates out and then we're left with the hydroxides and the aluminium ions on the left hand side the reactants forming aluminium hydroxide on the right hand side the products so we can write that out as a simplified ionic equation let's recap some of the key points from today first of all it's really important to get the correct formula to do this it's wise to try and learn some of the common ions once you've got that you remember only split apart the aqueous compounds from an equation and then remove the ions that appear on both sides, writing out a simplified equation once you've done. I hope you found that a really useful recap on ionic equations. If you've enjoyed it and want to watch more videos like that, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks and have a great day.